So this is problem three from the week six activities, blocks with friction. Uh, and I'm going to go through this, and I think for me, the trickiest part of this problem is figuring out what the forces are. So I want to go through that really slowly and try to explain, especially concerning the friction. Hopefully, one of the ways that I describe this will be helpful. So we got the two blocks, block two and block one, and there's a force F being applied to block two. Uh, and we're told a few things in the problem, namely that the surface between two and the ground is frictionless, but there is friction between one and two. And so the first thing I want to get us uh, to realize here is let's just say that, okay, so the, the blocks uh, both start at this position right here, if you look at sort of the middle where the blocks are. Okay, so as this problem progresses, block one is sliding backwards on block two. Okay, and so if we actually look in the future, over here. So here is say that block two has been pulled to this point over here. Okay, block one, maybe it's just on the edge about to fall off. Okay, I'm just sort of picking some random position here. But if we look at the distances, this is the distance uh, x1 that block one has traveled in this time. Block two has traveled a bigger distance. And so I think the important thing is that relative to where they started from, all right, block one and block two are moving in the positive x direction, if we call this the positive x direction. And what's happening is that they're both accelerating because they started at rest, all right? And so what we know is that uh, acceleration of one is less than the acceleration of two, but they're both accelerating in the positive direction, and they're both moving in the positive direction. Just that one is moving with less acceleration than two, so relative to two, it's sort of moving backwards, okay? But it's really important to realize it's actually moving forwards. And so if I look at block one, all right, the forces on block one, okay, there's our old friend gravity. We always have that. So again, when we're doing forces, there's gravity, and then there's things that are touching it. The only thing touching block one is block two. So block two, with touching block one, can apply two forces. It can apply a normal force, which I'll call it uh, the normal force. I'll call two acting on one, is what the subscripts mean there. And then there's a friction. Okay, so there's going to be a friction. It's going to be kinetic friction in this case because the blocks are sliding relative to each other. And the big question is the friction to the right or to the left. Well, the friction is to the right. And again, I'm going to try to come up with a couple of different ways to explain this. This is, I think, probably the trickiest part of this problem. But here, we know that the acceleration has to be positive. The acceleration of block one has to be a positive acceleration, has to be going to the right. And the only force that can possibly be accelerating rating block one is the friction. So the friction has to be going to the right. And so let's look at block two and see how that adds in to the picture. So block two, so of course we have M1, I'm sorry, that'd be M2G, so our old friend gravity going down. Uh, a normal force here, which I'll call the normal force of the ground. Uh, now block one is pressing down. And so block one, what kind of force would that be? Well, that would be a normal force so I'll call that N of one acting on two. And we know from Newton's third law that normal force of two acting on one has to be equal and opposite of the normal force one acting on two. So the absolute values of those two have to be the same. Uh, and by the same token, there's gonna be a friction this way here, okay, where it's the same magnitude of force F of K. And this is another way to think about it. So we also got our, our pulling force F here. Okay, the friction of this block one, it's hindering the motion of block two. All right, if block one wasn't there, block two would be able to go uh, faster and accelerate at a larger acceleration. And so that friction has to be backwards. And so since that one is backwards, by Newton's third law, okay, the, the equal and opposite reaction force uh, friction on one has to be to the right. Uh, so those are just some ways to hopefully understand uh, how that friction works. Again, I think that's probably the hardest part. Uh, one last way you can kind of think about it is that imagine if block one uh, was actually on an ice cube, okay, and so it didn't actually uh, have any friction at all, then block two would just slide out from underneath it and block one would just fall down right here. And so the thing that makes block one move forward, makes it accelerate, is that friction. Okay, because if you take it away, if you make uh, block two an ice, a piece of ice, uh, then there is, it doesn't move forward, it just sit there and fall down. 
Uh, and so the, the next part of the problem, we want to find the acceleration. So over here uh, in this problem, uh, I'll do my F, uh, sum of the forces in the Y direction. And the thing is, there's no acceleration in the Y direction, so I know that equals zero. And so my, I get N12 minus M1G equals zero. We get um, the common result that the normal force in this case is equals MG. If I do the forces in the x direction equals uh, the acceleration of the block one in the x direction, uh, the only force acting is the kinetic friction force. And so this is x, uh, maybe I'll change this here so that uh, it's actually one x. So it's acceleration of one in the x direction. And sort of forget this piece here. Again, our equation is mu times the normal force, and it's a little bit tricky, but remember, it's the normal force between the two surfaces that we're talking about. So this would be the normal force one, two, would be the one that we're interested in. And we know that that equals M1G, so we plug that in over here. M1G equals, this of course would be the mass M1, because that's the, f uh, the object we're talking about. Um, and so the mass cancels and we get that the acceleration of block one in the x direction is mu times g. Uh, now over here, in this direction, let's look at the forces in the x direction for, uh, for block two. So if we look at all the forces, it should be m2 times I'll call a2 in the x direction. Now in the x direction, the forces are gonna be F minus that kinetic friction term equals m2 a2 x uh, in, in the x direction. And again, be careful here. Uh, it's important to note that we're only dealing with block two in this case, and so uh, we only deal with the mass of block two. Sometimes that can be kind of tricky to know which, uh, which are the masses to deal with. So this would be the x. And so this f, now we know that this friction force, we found it over here, it's mu m1g. So it would be mu m1g equals m2a2x. And if we solve for this acceleration, we get something like f minus mu m1g divided by m2. And that's what the problem wanted us to find. One last thing that we can do is just look at the forces in the y direction acting on block two. Again, that, those should sum up to be zero because the block isn't accelerating in the y direction. And so my forces would be Ng uh, minus N12, where that's the normal force pressing down from block two, minus M2G equals zero. And if I solve for the normal force on the ground, I get N12 plus M2G, and of course we know that N12 from over here is M1G, and so in reality we find that the normal force on the ground is just the sum of the two uh, weights, the two MGs for the objects, which hopefully makes sense that the ground is going to be holding up the total weight of both of these.